All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How y'all doing, folks? To family, is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? Yes, let's talk. Thank you for the well wishes. I am feeling a little bit better. A little bit better. People telling me, yo, Jay, why you go to work, man? You should be resting. Let me tell you something. I'm going to have plenty of time to rest when they throw that dirt on top of that box. All right, till then, we going to keep on keeping on your zimmy. <laughs> it ain't Superman talking. I'm just talking shit. But, uh, yeah, that's how that goes. Listen, uh, two parts to this. Two parts to this. Story time and then information time. Story time. Somebody asked me about uh, me passing the individual I spoke about that was on the cell phone. He was was on his cell phone. (laughs) And we were, we were, you know, on the course. And I was like, you know, that that wasn't my place, whether or not I passed him or not. That was the other DSI's place. Um, And unfortunately, that did not disqualify him that's a judgment call on a driving safety instructor other people would have failed him but that's not part of the elm um uh, 804 now for those that don't know we have a certain guideline that we have to use and we have to judge there are certain criteria that if you know somebody hits something you're automatically disqualified if you leave your keys in the vehicle and it's running you're disqualified and that's that or if you get in an accident that's that uh, so that's the reason why you know he was an excellent driver but you know, I had to, you know, give him my two cents behind it. Nonetheless, I did realize something I have never really spoken about. And I've got this question a thousand times. Hey, man, how do I pass the driving test? And then I also got it for the tractor trailer operators. You know, that's what I do. Tractor trailer operator. Uh, what kind of driving test there is. So for this video, Jay is going to give you some information and how do I have this information well because I'm no longer a TTO I am a driving safety instructor here in the gray state of so um, now I want a couple things to get out there every driving safety instructor is different every course is supposed to be the same nationwide but I've been looking at videos and I've noticed that the courses are not identical nationwide they are similar so we're going to start with the ccas uh, the carriers course and then i'll speak about the tractor trailer operators course after this uh they also have a two-ton course as well as the um the pro master course which is a little bit different so i'm going to try to cover these topics in this video so sit back if this intrigues you and uh, get ready to listen also side note For anybody that even thinks about it, carriers are always going to be there. Carriers are going to be there. Everybody's concerned and worried about whether or not they're going to get rid of clerks, etc. As a PSC, I've been reading. I've been telling you guys that people getting get rid of uh, PSCs and clerks and mail handler assistants. You know who they don't get rid of? carriers so this information may be helpful for you so you know what the steps are once you're going to become a cca a carrier or a tractor trailer operator all right take that information for what it's worth sorry for the long introduction but we got to cover these bases first off if you go to apply for a cca or an rca or an arc or you know any type of carrier you're going to have to go through some form of DDC class, DDC defensive driving course. It's usually a series of reading as well as a video that you watch 
and they talk to you about what the post office wants in regards to defensive driving, safety, etc. Cool. You sit there for, I don't know, five, six hours and watch videos and listen to the instructor give you instructions. Great. The next day or an assigned day thereafter, because they usually give you a notice to report, whatever your reporting day is, that next reporting day is the day that you're going to come to actually do your driving course. I don't like to call it a test, although if you don't pass, um, it is what it is. It's not really a test. It's to see if you know have basic driving skills. So this is where I differ or some people differ, some DSIs differ nat- nationwide, and I still can't figure it out. Understand, to any other DSI, we are not drill instructors. We are there basically to monitor somebody's driving on a right-hand drive vehicle, give you some pointers on how to make some lefts, how to make some rights, how to back up and utilize your mirrors. That's all we're really there for. We have some driving safety instructors nationwide that feel like they are the end all. And unfortunately, the truth is we are. If you don't pass that, then you don't have a job. But as the key word instructor is, is that if somebody is having difficulty making some turns or backing up as an instructor, your job is to give them the knowledge on how to accomplish the task at hand. Not everyone receives information the same. This is imperative. You have to understand that not everybody receives information the same. Just understand, if you have a real teacher at school, they have 20 students. Not every child receives information the same. What makes them a great teacher versus just somebody that's there talking is they know how to adapt to every child and give them the information and try their best so that the child passes and gets and moves on. Good part is, is that there's the, the, the pass, the, 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 the fail pass rate for a CCA is like 90% pass and only 10% fail, give or take. Again, we're not drill instructors. And if you are a DSI and you're watching this, don't be a drill instructor because they'll go to the next part and they will talk tish about you. You don't need to be a drill instructor. You need to be compassionate because again, people came there for a job. It's not your job to determine whether or not they're going to physically work well at the job. Our job is just basically to see if you can drive. Stop making these assumptions. Well, if they get in there, they're going to be lazy. Not my job. Let the station deal with that. They're going to be horrible. They're going to be, oh man, they walk late. Let the station handle that. I cannot determine somebody's work ethic when they're only out there to drive. I can mentally, but it's not my job. So you get there on your driving day. And the first thing they're going to focus on is introducing you to the vehicle because you're stepping into a new vehicle and they're going to want you to know the parts of the vehicle. So that way, when you get into the vehicle on your first and second day or whatever, you know what all the moving parts are from your headlights, your caution lights, uh, your emergency brake, etc. They give you the mirror system. All right. They explain the mirrors to you. They tell you where the first mirror is, and there's seven mirrors to one of these LLVs, right-hand drive vehicles, long-life vehicles, and they teach you how to use these mirrors so that you're able to accomplish the task and be safe while you're on the road. That is the main point. They drill this into your head. They explain to you how to utilize your seatbelt because they have two point two point seatbelt. They disconnect the lap belt as well as the belt going over your shoulder. Um, they explain everything, how to slide your seat forward, where the fans are, etc. So that again, when you get in there, you're not looking for your headlights. You're not thinking that the, the vent system system is, is an air conditioned system. No, they teach you everything. They walk around the vehicle. They show you what a pre-trip inspection is. And more of you guys should probably do some pre-trip inspections. Although you're going to say, well, the supervisors don't care if we tell them that it's broke. Not your job report anything nonetheless they walk around the vehicle and they show you headlights any damage on the vehicle etc now once you finally get in the vehicle and you're ready to move on you're going to be daunted with some tasks of making some left turns some right turns etc 
They're going to show you and explain to you, or they should at least, that because of the type of vehicle that you're utilizing, the steering is loose in the vehicle, very, very loose. So what tends to happen is because our minds are trained, our bodies are physically trained, if you've ever driven before, to be on the left side of a vehicle. So while you're driving, you're going to pull your body to the left so that you can be on the left side of the road. Now, if you're in one of these vehicles and you veer to the left, you're going to be on the lines. You're going to be hitting cones, etc. It's very difficult initially to figure out I need to be on the right side of the vehicle. I need to be behind the passenger seat of the person in front of me. That's kind of how I put it in my head. Got to be behind the passenger seat of the first person in front of you. You have to physically be closer to the curb on your right. And people, it beats people up. They let their mind whoop them. Bottom line is you're just driving a regular vehicle on the right side. Steering is going to pull to the left. I call it feathering. You feather your wheel back to the right. It'll pull you to the left. Feather your wheel back to the right just a little bit. Oversteering will make your vehicle rock. Don't oversteer. Don't oversteer. Don't oversteer. You have to make sure that you utilize your mirrors when you turn to your left and you turn to your right. You're going to be looking at mirror number one and number five. They'll explain the mirrors to you. Number one is on the bottom right. Number five is on the bottom left. Those are pretty much your best friends, except for the mirror in the back, which we'll get to in a second. Making right turns, making left turns. You have to cut your wheel very hard. You can't just ease into it like a regular car. Like we got the power steering. No, you got to whip that thing. You got to bring it straight and then ease your wheel back. Don't rock it. All right, don't rock it. We got to keep that thing straight. Go down your course. Now, we have a very good course at my place. Probably have one of the best courses in all of the state that I live in. There are other places that I've seen videos where the, the views are exactly what the ELM, the guidelines tell you. They make a right first, then they show you to make a left. You don't have a full course. Then you make an angle stop, etc. Now, they're also going to tell you to do some offset backing. Offset backing is basically two parking spaces. Just imagine you're at a mall, two parking spaces, one and two. You need to pull straight up in front of space number one away from it and then you need to cut your wheel and back into space number two then you need to pull straight up in front of space number two and then back into space number one the key what i do what i tell all my students is you can see mirror number one and number mirror number five look at your bumper your bumper pushes out just a little bit past the whole body of your vehicle so if you move your head from side to side you don't have a camera in this thing you ain't got a camera. If you move your head from side to side, you're looking at mirror number five, you're looking at mirror number one, you will see that bumper. As you slowly start to back up, do not lose the lines. Don't lose the lines. If you lose the lines while backing in, you're going to end up running over a cone if they use cones where they're at, or you're going to go over the line, you're not going to be straight. A lot of people don't back up into spots. As a truck driver, that's kind of my thing, backing up. But if you're not accustomed to backing up, before you go for your test, do it in your car. Cover your rear view camera and just use your side mirrors. Get into the habit of it. Because you got to remember, if you go to a mall and you back up into a spot and you're all over the line, remember somebody else is going to pull up next to you and they got to open up their doors. Our doors slide open. Other people's doors open wide. So you have to be considerate of the person next to you. Hence, you want to be in the lines when you back up. There's no such thing as perfection to my other DSIs that want to say, well, the person was too close to the right. They're not dead square in the middle. Man, I had these people that work with me. They would thought they, they were just, they were horrible. I tell you, horrible, horrible. Still got one. Horrible. And they just was drilling people. I mean, failing people left and right. And I'm like, well, did you teach them anything? You got to you gotta talk to these people, man. These people need jobs. Well, they ain't going to pass anyway. That ain't your business. Anyway, um, for any of my other DSIs, remember, it's your job, again, to give them some pointers. And that's a good pointer. Don't lose the lines. You'll see, the, you'll see your bumper, and you start to slowly back up. Don't lose the cone. 
Don't lose the line. You look left and look right and ease your way back. Feather your wheel. Once you first start to get into that spot and you feel like you're starting to get straight, now your next daunting task is to look in mirror number seven, dreaded mirror number seven. Mirror number seven, though, is your backup camera. That is the mirror that's all the way in the back of your vehicle. It's a, they call them pot mirrors. Let me correct you guys, convex mirrors. That's what they call them. That's what, that's what it is. It's just a round mirror. It's a spot mirror. It shows you everything that's behind you. And in order to do that, you're going to have to connect mirror number six on your left above mirror number five to mirror number seven. And then you back up slowly so that you don't run over the cones behind you. Don't run the cones over. I call my cones little Jimmy. I don't want them to run over little Jimmy. Anyway, so as you finally get into your spot, you back up slowly. You ease it back each, each, each. And then if you start to see little Jimmy behind you, that cone, you stop the vehicle before you run him over. That's the key. Slowly maneuver your way back. Basically, that's it. They also have uh, parallel parking, parallel parking. A lot of people have never parallel parked. And there are methods that your instructor should tell you on how to parallel park as well. Me trying to explain it to you right now would be a little bit daunting, but... If their courses match every other course in the country, typically they'll have three cones in front of you, three cones, and have a space. You just have to get into that space and try to get as close as you can to the curb. And once you're in a parking space, they may tell you different, but curbing your wheels is ideal whenever you park next to a curb. Turn your wheel towards the curb. Turn your wheel towards the curb the only reason you would turn your wheel away from the curb is if you're on an incline so if you're facing uphill and you turn your wheel towards the curb now all of a sudden once you start sliding backwards it's going to go away from the curb if you're facing if you're facing uphill you turn your wheel towards the curb it'll go backwards now if you turn your wheel the opposite way towards the street when you're facing uphill if your wheel if your vehicle starts to roll backwards it will roll and it'll be stopped by the curb that's what they call curbing your wheels there's some places in the country that are flat deserts of arizona etc that you just have to basically every if it's flat you still park toward you turn your wheels towards the curb why do you turn your wheel towards the curb another reason if you get slammed from the back somebody's out of control and they hit your vehicle from the back your vehicle is not going to go straight and hit the vehicle in front of you your vehicle is not going to go into the street because if it hits from the back and you're facing the street it's going to go boom go into the street and possibly hit another kid or another vehicle if it hits it from the back it will go towards the curb and the sidewalk that's what the reason that we curb vehicles for all right Next task is an angle stop, which is basically because you only have a window and a box behind you, you need to be able to pull up to stop signs and intersections and see. You can't see, then you got a problem. So an angle stop is you're pulling up to a intersection on an angle. They'll have you sit to the right a little bit, stop the vehicle, cut your wheel all the way hard to the left then you ease your way up so that you're able to look out the window and see the whole road you stop cut your wheel to the right then progress that's what an angle stop is so you have full vision of the road in front of you your job is to be very safe and not cause an accident because if you just pull up to a street and assume that the street is good and all of a sudden you start pulling out you end up crashing and so if you have any issues when doing that angle stop then you just need to ease up a little bit more. Basically, you're facing on an angle, cut your wheel so that you're trying to maneuver your vehicle so that you're almost facing straight, you're able to see, then you maneuver. One of your other tasks is obviously to do a three-point turn. Now, that's not mandatory in every state. They teach you how to do a three-point turn. That's almost common sense. Also, touching mailboxes. That's that's one of the main things. They put some obstacles in front of the mailboxes. They simulate garbage cans in front of the mailboxes. They simulate uh, basketball courts close to the mailboxes. 
Your job is basically to touch each mailbox without hitting anything on the course. Key is when you're driving one of these vehicles and you reach out to, you're sitting on the right side, you wanna reach out and touch the mailbox without having a stretch. You can stretch so far, dog come up and snatch your arm. So you basically, when you get close to the mailbox, if you feel like you're too far, stop the vehicle, cut it hard to the right, ease up, and it'll bring the whole vehicle closer to your mailbox. That's the key. Then progress. While delivering mail, have to have your caution lights on. All right. And then they take you on a street drive, anywhere between 30, 45, maybe an hour in real life situations. They put you on the road. They have you, everything that you did on the course, they have you out there on the road doing it. And yes, it may feel uncomfortable, but it's up to you to try your best to be that, to be that person, to make it happen. Now, one thing I try to emphasize to people is this. Um, if you're driving and you get out on the road, please stay at the speed limit or at least five miles under the speed limit. A driving safety instructor needs to see you driving real life situations. So if you get out, you did great on the course, but you get out on the road, then all of a sudden you just creeping and you causing other vehicles to slow down, you can cause an accident. So no, you gotta do real life situations and be as cautious and careful as possible. All right, ease your way up and then do your thing. They usually tell you where to make your right ample time in advance. They'll tell you where to make your left, etc. Great, you've completed your course. They'll tell you what your next steps are. Now, if for some reason you didn't pass your course, some states do, some states don't, which I'm still trying to figure this one out, is you didn't pass, okay? You didn't fail, just didn't pass today. All right, if you have a second chance, you go, you ask them, say, okay, well, I didn't pass today. What do I need to improve on? 99% of the time, it's just backing up. You got some issues backing up, you go bring yourself behind a Walmart and you practice, you practice, you practice. That's it. You have issues with parallel parking, you practice. But Jay, that's not the same. Yes, it is the same because we're teaching you muscle memory. Well, you didn't use your signals on the course. Muscle memory. We want you to use your signals. We want you to make sure that you're able to turn. We want to make sure you're able to back up. We want to make sure that you're able to use your horn while backing up. All of these things come into play. It sounds complex, but it becomes second nature when you're a carrier. All right? Great. Now let's talk about Pro Master. Pro Master. Pro Master. It's a van. That's all the hell it is. It's just a van. You're driving on the left side. They'll have, and it's a course doing turning right, turning left, backing up long distance, doing offset backing, parallel parking, get out on the road and drive it. Don't hit nothing. That's what Pro Master is. Two ton. Two ton is the, like the box vans that the FedEx people and the UPS people drive. Same concept, driving forward, driving backwards, long distance, using mirrors, teaching you how to use the lifts. That's what they do with that. Now, for my tractor trailer operators, if you stuck around, if you know how to drive, man, I shouldn't even talk to you, dog. I shouldn't even talk to you, dog. Okay? If the first thing you want to do, and they tell you, hey, you, you got to learn how to, you got to do the uh, Class B vehicle, which is the MVO. If you're doing an MVO, motor vehicle operator okay you're just driving a straight truck you're gonna drive a long distance backwards straight line that's it then you're gonna pull up then you're gonna offset you're gonna go straight up you offset to your right pull up offset to your left you parallel park it you're gonna go and um yeah parallel park it offset back then you're gonna do that alley docking you're gonna do it from the right side then you're gonna do it from the blind side just basically backing because we have to back in the docks if you don't know how to back then you shouldn't be in my craft i don't know why nobody would know how to back up but nonetheless um then they take you on a street drive use your signals use a seat belt they familiarize you with the vehicle they tell you how to use everything tractor trailer operator who my people my new people if you know how to drive, this is this is common sense. All right, same exact concept. You're gonna be offset backing a tractor trailer. You're gonna be backing up straight, 
for a long distance to see if you can handle and maneuver the vehicle. They'll familiarize you with the parts of the vehicle. Let me tell you something. I hate it in the Nationals. These internationals that we got, them things are beasts, baby. They can whip and turn on a, on a dime, okay? So they're very good with steering. They speed limit, I think they're set at like 75. You don't drive that fast unless you're out in the middle of the country somewhere. Um, but yes, you go forward, you go back, you alley dock, you blindside as well. You parallel park. They give you ample space to parallel park. Um, and you also go on a street drive. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's nothing too complex. So any of my tractor trailer operators that want to get in, it's if you know how to drive the basics of being a tractor trailer operator, we can't teach that you're coming there with a skill. So you don't get a second attempt either. That's something that we emphasize. You are coming as a professional driver. Hence, they say you need experience when you come in there. So we're not teaching you how to drive that. Now we are administering an exam, which is different than the LLVs and the FFVs. Okay, so please don't go there if you're not honed on your skills. All right, because you're going to just embarrass yourself. If you hit something, that's it. You don't got a job. You can't apply. All right. Also, for anybody that stuck around this far, if you're one of those PSEs or clerks or mail handler assistants or somebody like that, and you decide to become a CCA and you're not sure if you drive well and you let your position go, and you go to become a CCA and you don't pass, now you don't have a job. Just understand that. So please familiarize yourself with the tasks that are at hand and what you need to do before you go and accept the CCA position. All right, I hope this information was as thorough as I possibly can give. Uh, if there are other DSIs out there and you want to chime in and tell us how you do it in your area, I'd love to hear it because again, we're supposed to follow ELM 804 nationwide. Now we have like this amazing course, great course, which boggles my head on how, you know, my people would fail people. We had uh, horrible DSIs here, but we taking care of that problem. We got to have some compassionate people Okay, compassionate people. We the second people that these people see when they apply. But if you have some steps that maybe I missed because, you know, I just tried to cover the bases or any advice, please give that information because, you know, I'm doing this and uh, have other things to do. And this was a very long video and I got interrupted somewhere in this video, a phone call. So with that being said, this is JH. And hopefully this information was great, immaculate, spectacular all those good words for somebody all right i'm out unexpected expenses stressing you out get the money you need now with loans for feds a program designed specifically for federal employees bad credit is not a problem application is fast and easy with same day approvals apply now